Elon Musk buying Twitter. I am low key terrified. I'm low key don't understanding how like he said no to solving world hunger for six billion dollars supposedly. And I now listen, side fact, I haven't actually researched it, but I did see it on a post in a social media platform, so I don't believe it a hundred percent, right? But I'm just saying if it is true, which I don't know if it is yet because I haven't verified sources. There's a thing going around saying that he asked the UN for a proposal to how to use his $6 billion or something to end world hunger. And he, they gave it to him and he decided not to, but then decided to buy Twitter for like quadruple that price. Um, I, that's terrifying, Holy. Sharon. Seems like a social media thing, but if I don't think it's true, because who's going to go to Elon Musk with, from the UN and be like, "Here, this is our proposal." You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, he's Elon Musk. He'll do what he wants. That's like the fact that so many billionaires can control just like the little amount of anything. Like billionaires write a check and can control free speech. Isn't that crazy? Are we are we okay with that? We are not okay with that. What are we doing about it, Sharon? What can I do about him buying Twitter? Well, we're gonna vote for change so we can stop getting some lobbyists in office. And they can actually mm -hmm. pass legislation about things like that. But to be fair, if you have legislation like that, you're prohibiting free press. Right. So how do you argue that? How do you argue? It's literally like a catch-22 for the main, for the little man, as always, because that's what happens all the time. I can respect that. I, I like, I think the problem that we have... What? Is, I'm sorry. I'm, I, I got too, too many things going on. Restate your question for me, Sharon. I didn't think I had a question, just a comment. Okay, and we're definitely in um, stream, so if somebody else wants to live stream your camera, you're more than welcome to do so. Because you will, you will just automatically join the stream because it's just me and Discord. If you don't know what my Discord channel is, then this is Discord done. Feel free to pop on in and say hello. Okay, so we're talking about Elon. I'm sorry, because Carrie was just leaving. This is a whole, she planned to be here for the stream, and then I don't technologically have a way to get her into the stream. So, I'm sorry about that. It's easier for you to participate in the stream from your own couch by hitting that follow and like and subscribe button or show. Oh, look, there How she is, is just now. On your Twitch account, by the way? Ha nothing. Nothing is progressing with my Twitch account at all. Am I here? You are here. Hello, Carrie. Welcome in. She's Carrie from Seattle. Not really no, from Seattle. No, it's Carrie are. No, I I'm, would I'm kidding. I don't want any of my people to be on in my business. <laughs> you don't want to be what? No, oh, mom. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people pay good money to see people eat. That's like a whole thing on Twitch. Yeah, it is. It's a whole thing everywhere. Oh, God, thing. I would know. It's Here. it's based off of, first of all, it's based off of a Korean thing called mukbang, mukbang. Right. which is which i am korean so like it's a thing but i don't like to do anything on camera so therefore i'm not gonna eat on camera I get it. but she but she will crunch in our ears <laughs> that was your asmr moment for the day people just Did listen to your your crunch that's fine it's mm -hmm. worth cinnamon twist, and you know what? I worked hard for this cinnamon twist today. There you go. Uh, here. Okay. And if you want to watch what you're looking in Discord, you don't forget you can go to the Twitch and look at it. And apparently it works. Sarah, say something. Make sure I can hear you too.
Are you talking to me? Is the sound of my car? Is the sound of my car really loud? No. We don't hear okay. a car at all. Oh, okay. and, and I can okay. hear, and the so voice no, is coming through on stream. Clear as a bell. Nice. Uh, so now I just have to know. Every Wednesday, I gotta be driving somewhere for fucking work. <laughs> I feel like now that you've gotten your headphones and stuff set up, you'll be okay. Well, no, it's going through the car. It's not through my headphones. Yeah, but you, but you had headphone issues that we resolved while you were here today. Well, yeah. yeah. So I think but next week you'll be able to. I will be yeah. better coming onto this on Wednesdays. You will be what? Better about getting on to your live streams on Wednesdays. Oh, nice. I, I hope. I hope we, we start making a change. That's that's all I ever wanted to do in life. So do you think I should run for office? Like, do you think that's like a feasible, like, do you think it's something I should do as a human being? Wow. Like, really, as my friends, do you think it's something I should do? I don't know. And Brandon just read up dips, so. Who did? Brandon. Oh, bye, Brandon. Rip, rip Brandon. Is anybody watching the stream? Yes. So, so it sells. Hi, streamers. Oh, Brandon's watching the stream. He says, "Do it. Run for office." Brandon's Aww. a vote. Like local or like. I think Brandon wants me to run for somebody in D.C. So I, I could live in D.C. That's probably why Brandon wants me to run for office. But if you do uh, local, I would love. I love. Oh. I can make you your website. I'm. I've gotten. There you, go. you haven't making my website for my greenhouse yet. Oh, you? Remember we talked about that. We did not. Yeah, we did. You were talking about I'm going to learn how to make a website, and I was like, great, we'll do that. Make my website for my greenhouse. Oh, well, I made Chris's website, and it actually turned out pretty great. So I can make your website. I believe you could. Make it happen. I, I will sign off on it. <laughs> how much you want me? To, how much you want for that? <laughs> Here's the thing. How much you want to be the web person? The website costs. If you want to publish it and own your own domain, it's going to cost about four hundred bucks. Oh. But three years, and then you just have to pay an extra twelve dollars to keep the domain name every year, which is fine. Wait, you're paying four hundred dollars a month? No, for no, the total is four hundred dollars for three years. Have your own domain. But it's for three years. Like, who are you paying that to? The web maker, and then they they help, and then every year you have to do the um, you have to buy a domain thing, and um, and keep your domain name. Okay, so it's we have people thing. with questions in in the chat. What is it? Back I can't see says, it. I thought you hated the structure of the government. And then he asked, what would you run for? And I think that is a very valid point and question. And that's like that to this point, like when I first moved back from Hawaii, I had fire under my soul that I was going to run for office. I was going to change the world. I was going to save the world, as a matter of fact. And the roadblocks that come from trying to run for office have made me want to kill myself on multiple occasions because you need money and even now that i have money do i want to throw it at that particular cause just to no. not accomplish anything i mean like look how much money ross perot spent i don't have that much money right so you have what you broke up what was your what was your what was your theory for this? It says that I like if I looked to see that I could run for the Virginia House of uh, Representatives this year, but I'd have to get fifteen hundred signatures on a petition into the county, like into Richmond, by like the twenty second, which I think I've, I've we've passed. So I wouldn't be able to run in the midterms anyway. And I did finally find the website that tells you what's available, which I should probably link that to everybody else. Because, you know, I work for the election people. Um, 
like the people who count the votes that everybody's like yeah yeah y'all are right blah, blah. no i was one of those people and i tell you what i can count tell you what tell you what and if you think I can't count, if you think I can count and still fix the election, that means you think I'm crooked. And if you think I'm a crook, you must turn away now. We're 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 done. We're we're so done. I feel like when you said that, all I can think about was Robin Williams in Mrs. Doubtfire when he's cooking the lobster, and he's like, "I am not a crook. I am not a crook." What he was thing, you know? Why does that? Why does that make you think that? Because you just said that you're not a crook. And so in my mind, it just went to Mrs. Doubtfire <laughs> with Robin Williams doing that impression about Nixon. I don't know what to tell you. Okay. I have a mind, you guys. I can't help it. Just I respect tune in. It. Tune in. This is why this is why you are friends with me, because I can come up with weird scenarios and analogies. I like it. Uh, she keeps the conversation real. At least I tried to. All we right. lost Carrie. We lost Carrie. Oh, sorry, Carrie. Maybe she's watching on stream. She might be participating via, via chat for stream. That's good. Or it's also hard to get a lot of people in here at one time. So back enough. is just that. I mean, most of the time, I feel like the conversations we get in are mostly us. Like, conversations that are serious and meaningful do tend to happen between two people as opposed to a group. I guess that's. I have noticed that everyone starts <laughs> saying sentences with I quite a bit in groups. <laughs> that's also true. As Asher Maid puts in chat, I am here. <laughs> Thanks for being there, Asher. It's probably more important that you're there in Twitch than in the Discord, because Twitch I get counts for, but Discord not so much. Discord is free. Discord actually costs me money if I wanted to make Discord that kind of thing. So, yeah. Go to Twitch. Watch it on Twitch. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, anyway, um, the thing I just put in there is the link to the elections.virginia.gov. It's And they have a bulletin board that tells you what posts are available in your area that you can run from. The reason I found mm. this out is because we were supposed to have a Democratic primary this year, and they canceled it. And I went, "What? How did they just cancel the Democratic primary?" That's like, what? like I started, I was about to get get up in my feels, and she's like, "No, they canceled it because there was only one dude. Like it was pointless to waste the taxpayers' money for one dude." And I'm like, "That is fair, but sad. But is it?" Well, it makes you think about the state of our government that <laughs> we have a lot of unopposed no that was just the um he was unopposed it was a democratic primary there still is a republican they choose to hold caucuses which are not on taxpayer property right republicans elect their own officials in their own way and do what they want to do which is why i, I can't believe we can't just start the moderate party but apparently to do that you have to have a registered bank account with at least a thousand dollars in it which I could easily do, but do I want to follow that governmental structure? Like, is but this the route? What do we mean? Do we mean moderate as in we are fiscally conservative, <laughs> socially liberal? Do we mean moderate yes, as that. We are socially conservative and fiscally liberal, which is not not us at all, but, you know, just playing devil's advocate there. I mean, we can call our party whatever we want to call it. I just think we'd get more votes with the moderate party. Because even if we don't necessarily believe what you believe, we can look at both sides and say, y'all are crazy bitches and need to compromise. That's really what our government needs right now, is the two people need to be like, listen, 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 y'all need to work for the people and not for your fucking parties, yo. I mean, if we're thinking about it, though, even the Democratic Party is split into different divisions and branches. You've got the more moderate that leans a little more towards the conservative side. And then you've got a little bit more like Bernie side. You know what I mean? Like you, you have that split in just the Democratic Party alone. Says who? Says everybody. Think about it. I mean, you say that, but then all the big issues, they come down to the same lines, or they're drawing the party lines, or the fact that we have two parties is ultimately the problem. I mean, agreed. I agree. So, I mean, I, I would like to create a moderate party that is designed to be the third party alternative. 
don't like, we technically have a third party alternative? So I, do you talk about the libertarians or the Green Party? The Green Party was created by the same dude in like 40 years ago, and he's run as his own candidate since then. That's true. The Libertarian Party puts up progressively more crazy people because they're so extreme libertarian that you can't – like it's because of the Libertarian Party, they're, they're supposed to dem like represent a niche. Like that is who they are. They are extreme – Whatever. I think maybe we're not looking at like the like our government parties the way we do our corporations in this country. If politics was an industry, they would break up the Republican and Democratic Party. Like if AT and T and Microsoft all owned all the phones ever, we would have to step in and break those up because it's too much of a monopoly to have just two people occupying one industry, right? You're not wrong. So how is politics not an industry that we can't just break up that monopoly and say, hey, how about we have a liberal Democrat and a conservative Democrat and a liberal Republican and a conservative Republican? And then now you have four parties to choose from, and then we can send a single transferable votes when we have four candidates in every election. That would involve changing the entire system. Not which... really. We could just go through and break up the parties. That that Are if, you... if we just change that system, that would still give us four options. That's true. You're not wrong. If we just did that, if we just went to the Democratic Party and said, hey, let's split, that would give us three. If you could convince the Democratic Party to literally split. But then you have this whole thing, and then they've been preventing us from doing that in the presidential elections for the last – since fucking Kerry Bush. They've been giving us the lesser of two evils. Right. So it's because they know that. The process that if you split the Democratic Party, that's an – their, their way to go against that is that if you split the Democratic Party into two, you're automatically giving the win to the Republicans because then they're like the you know bigger party. And I think they're stupid because many people from the Republican Party would probably join a conservative Democratic Party. I think so. I bet, I think I bet so. If, you, if somebody like me who came out and said, oh, yeah, you can do whatever the hell you want to do with your body, but leave my money alone. That's how I'd like my government stance to be. Get out of my money. Get out of my body. Thanks. Bye. The rest of it, surely. I want you to fix schools. I want you to fix roads. I want you to fix the police. I want you to fix the firemen. I want you to send some people to space. I want you to really, really focus on education because our children are the future, regardless of what we think. Um, like, literally, they're the future because we're going to die. Hey, literally. Um, all right, that was a rant. I'm done. That was six points. That's enough. If I can accomplish six points, six points in an office run, I would do it. I love that I turned this game night into like a political night. I am the worst friend ever. Well, you realize these used to be political nights before they were game nights. Oh, uh, I'm just behind is what it is. I mean, it, people don't want to talk about politics, and it's a lot of times it really – like Carrie didn't tune in because she's going to have like an existential crisis with the information I give her. Mm. I – do a lot of research, do a lot of news reading and listening to, and I'm terrified. And you think, oh, it's because he listens to news all day. Like, I realize it's repeating a lot of the same things. I realize it's not saying this. Like, it's not new stuff. I'm terrified with, like, the six facts that I know about recent news. Did you mm. know that recycling plastics is not a real thing? No, I did not. And they've been lying to us for 30 years. It was just on an NPR story Sunday. It's a legitimate they... news source release that recycling for 30 years has been a lie, and they've been just basically dumping it in the ocean. <laughs> and what, what, what the get, – get this. What the plastic industry's response to all these dossiers and documents and retired officials stepping forward and all this evidence that's mounting forward, they've now said that all that money they made from that they've used to actually create a way to recycle plastic. 30 years later, yeah. And they expect us to believe it again. Like, it's literally, they put the same ad out. It was like, they the, the woman, the NPR episode showed the ad when 30 years ago, and a new ad with, like, new graphics and multicolored children, but pretty much the same message. <laughs> like. <laughs> what does that tell you? What does that? Don't look up. That's what it is. 
They're literally telling you not to look at the evidence in your face. And American consumerism is not going to compete with the climate ultimately. So like I, that's where I'm, I'm, I keep walking this fine ledge, but whether I should run for office or it, it ex, like accept defeat, I guess, because what else you got to do? You watch the movie. Don't look up. Have you looked at it? Have you watched it? No. Oh my God. You have to watch it. It really isn't a very great movie on Netflix. Like it's got uh, DiCaprio, Meryl Streep, Ariana Grande, uh, like a whole bunch of people. It's a star studded movie. It was entertaining. I laughed. I cried. It, there's a hidden message. It's about climate change. Makes sense. Leonardo DiCaprio's in it. So, and he's very big on climate change. And this is a great way to tell a story. I just, I can't believe people haven't watched it yet, but this is, that's the whole I mean, thing. <laughs> the whole, cry. the whole thing. <laughs> I don't want to cry. <laughs> but I mean, you don't want to cry because that's facing and dealing with things. Ugh. Already, I'm good. The whole world is full of apathy is the real problem is how do you get people to care? You Even don't. if I run for office and I get into office and start trying to make change and you're like, oh shit, there's a meteorite. Oh, fuck it. <laughs> uh yep i'm on a on a sunnier note it'll be hot so there'll be lots of sun for you when i go to chicago it's supposed to be in like the 50s if glo hey but see global warming like next year it'll be like in the 60s <laughs> Maybe you should move to a cold climate so like when global warming happens, you'll be like, oh, wow, we don't get any snow anymore, and it's only 120 degrees in the summer. <laughs> I checked the weather, and next week, so basically when I'm in Chicago, Nashville is going to be like 70 or 80 degrees, and Chicago will be like 50, maybe 60, but definitely 50. I mean, I don't, I, I wouldn't move to Chicago. I'm definitely going to come visit, but I wouldn't move there because it's cold. Moving to Chicago. I uh, will visit one day. Mm. Regardless, I will visit one day. I like to travel. I like cities, but only for like a day or two. I've been multiple times. The city is cool. A lot of culture, a lot of history. It's also a little dangerous. I think it's I think it's the one, if not the top, but one of the top five most dangerous cities in the U.S. Okay, so that's those they're are those are cons. Those are definitely cons. <laughs> the crime rate of Chicago is like a hundred and twenty percent of the national average. A hundred and twenty percent of the national average. Just throw that out there right now. 120 violent crimes not just robberies like the violent crimes are bad all right so i, I retract my approval of this move mm -hmm. retracted literally because the world's going to shit you don't want to go to one that's already shit that'd be like saying you're gonna move to yemen maybe we should just move to antarctica sorry if you're from yemen out there i, I don't mean to call your country shit i just know what you're going through <laughs> Sorry. Listen, I think we should just like deal with it and go to Antarctica and hang out with the penguins and call it a day. Until it's melted. We're like happy feet. Minus How would you feel if you went to like the Antarctica and you saw like the fact that it's warmed up so much their habitats have shrunk and like they're starving and like like the penguins are you know, like have you ever been to a climate situation where the wildlife is eating themselves to death? No, that means they'll try to eat me. That means a penguin's going to try to eat me? I no, don't think the, sa so. the saddest part about that is they look too sad to move. Like, they've starved to death, and they're just like, the, you can see their bones and skin shrunk up. Like, they're almost dead, but they're kind of like... This has turned into a very depressing, depressing hour. This is my life. I'm The world is on fire, and I can't get people to notice. <laughs> and is you're like, uh, hey. No, like, no. I don't the know world was on don't... fire when I was in Hawaii, and I used to drive my whole red outfit and my red bike for a celebration of Fire Drill Fridays. It was Jane Fonda's big movement that fizzled out. Oh, yeah. I've been, been pounding the streets for years, being like, the sky is on fire. Hey, 
you guys might want to the sky on fire. <laughs> Does that make you feel like the chicken little, like chicken little with the the sky is falling, the sky is falling type thing? But I don't remember the lesson to that. It was was oh. he wrong in the end, and he was supposed to calm down and not freak out about things. I don't think the sky was actually falling in that scenario. Yeah. It's been a very. I feel All like I that remember... was probably a le life lesson about just letting it go. Maybe. The puppies are like, come give me attention. I put, they've been... I put my dog out all, all day because Carrie was here. So I had, I had human company and I let the dog outside and I feel like the dog has been slighted. Um, Archie is like, come play with me. And Charlotte is sitting in my throw blanket on the chair. Like, don't you wish human. you could be a dog? No. I, I, I wish I could be a dog. I want to deal with fleas, dude. I deal with fleas and ticks every day. Oh, God. By the way, I can't see the chat on, on Twitch, so you got to you gotta update me. Nobody said anything since Bat Coaster put some emotes in. We do oh. have viewers. A lot? Three. What's... Oh. I mean, I don't know how many, how many viewers I you expect to get. I, like, one day, I'll get to a point where I can have an average of three viewers, and then you get to be an affiliate. An affiliate gets cool little gizmos they get to put in the chat and have chat points and, you know, like, mm. interaction features and all that. Asher Maid's still actively watching because he said woot. <laughs> hello, hello. Pat Coaster then put in some uh, Joker emotes. They got to bounce around the screen, which I love. He knows I love the bouncy emotes. He totally missed our conversation about the trip, so we should probably fill him in later. He did indeed. We said it, we, basically we said you go owe us some money in June to make sure your commitment to this trip is valid. <laughs> but we still never got over this whole uh, gas prices and air, oh, and the airlines. We're going to, have to book your like you have to book your own airlines because uh, information was needed. I think we should all just get together at one point and be like, hey, let's let's all buy our flights right now and we'll just talk about it and do it right then. <laughs> For me, it'll be different because I'm going to fly out of a different city. Yeah, I saw one that had a um, layover. I'm sorry that like from D.C. to Chicago to Kona earlier. I did see one of those. Theoretically, if plan B happens, then that would work. Mm hmm. But, you know, everything's up in the air and this is so far away and all these things and plans off to go asunder. That's one of my favorite books in high school. Mm. Of Mice and Men. That's the whole quote. Of Mice and Men, plans off to go asunder. No, it was The Count of Monte Cristo, but that's just me. Have you ever had a Monte Cristo, like the sandwich? I refuse to have a Monte Cristo, but I say that like I just didn't eat Taco Bell, so. Right? Like, what's, 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 why are you against a Monte Cristo? I don't know, because it's like deep fried and like. Is it? I thought it was wrapped up in a crepe, but the only one I've ever had was from Cheddar's, so I don't know if it's like legit. The real one is like deep fried and there's jelly and turkey and Ooh. it's like deep fried. It sounds good to me. You gotta have cheat day once in a while. I feel like I've been having cheat days every day. If you can't tell by my face, it's like. Well, shh. that is a problem. I limit mine to once a week at most. I need to get my life together. And I find that those once a meal, once a week cheat meals are usually extra delicious. I think that if I don't give myself a cheat meal, it's actually better for me because then I don't have to worry about it. I just would. I think long term. If I was doing it for like a month or two, whatever, but. Long term societal pressure is to oh, Bat Coaster says it was cheap. It, Cheddar's was deep fried as well. I'm just remembering it wrong, I guess. Um, but it's too oh shit, I lost my train of thought. What was I talking about? Too difficult for it to be a long term thing without a cheat day. Oh, right, because you're, like the the mes mental discipline is there, but the societal pressure. Like the advertising, the subliminal advertising, the signages, the colors. Like they're designing things to make your brain want and desire. And as a human being, you have to give in to your wants and desires every once in a while and in small doses. 
Like, just because you want a cheeseburger, and you're like, all right, a cheeseburger, I'm going to give myself a cheeseburger for this this cheat day, you don't have to eat the whole cheeseburger that day. You can have it the half one day and half the next day, and then your cheat meal was two! <laughs> you know, like... Can we talk about that for a second? That I hate that growing up, we were given this bullshit story about how... Your plate. All- Eat all your leftovers or eat all everything on your plate because think of the starving kids of Africa. And we've created this like overeating culture. And I am a prisoner, an example of what happens from this culture. Everybody in America bullshit. is a prisoner of that. And you know what that was? That was corporate propaganda as well. I had to learn. I had to learn. And that's one thing I've been learning with my nutritionists and trainers with is I don't have to eat everything in front of me. Oftentimes you shouldn't. I, I don't have to feel guilty about taking it home. I hate leftovers. I don't want to take it home because I don't want to reheat it. Like I just I don't just want to waste don't. the plastic container. Right. And I would rather only eat half than not overeat. Which and is that's why where... being in a relationship is more economical. Cause then you could just go places and share meals. You would think, but in the relationships that I've been in, they'll eat their meals and then whatever's left over on my plate too because we are in this culture of overeating. But hopefully the right person would be be the one. That's why I'm single is I'm waiting for that person I can share meals with. Mm. Maybe one day. Mm. Truth. The dog is barking at something again. Hold on. Enter the stream, Sharon. Do what? Did we just say entertain? Entertain, oh, the, entertain the stream. I am bad at entertaining myself. Well, Seriously. you're going to have to. Sing a song. What was the song you said you wanted to say? Redneck woman? Go, oh, Sharon. Sing it up. Uh, no, Sharon does not sing in front of people. I don't sing, you guys. I know lots of singer friends. Living in Nashville makes it so hard to even attempt karaoke because everyone that does karaoke in Nashville is like this amazing singer and it. It's very, very rough. It's rough out here. I mean, right? But, you know, you could be like that guy from, uh, like, American Idol. She bangs, she bangs. She and moves, be able to talk. I think not. That's the other part is because social media is so big and everybody has a camera attached to their freaking hand, it's like it makes it. Okay, it makes I don't know you- if you can still hear me or not. I can definitely hear you. It makes you not want to do things because it's like somebody will catch you at a weird moment. Then it's out in the universe for like the rest of your life. And then what? Then what? I'm just going to live on my own island. Oh, is that that? How's how's that going to work out for you? That floats. A plastic? I haven't figured it out yet. That's the only way it's going to work is to be made of plastic, I think. Whatever. (laughs) Great. Good, right? Ooh. You know, because it's already a plastic island inside of Texas. Right. Oh, my back is killing me. I'm getting old, Sharon. I don't know what the dog was barking at, but I'm old. I'm so old. <laughs> I hope he hasn't, like, he's had too much. You know, he hurt his leg. Oh, really? Yeah, we think he fell in the winter, and we took him to the vet. And he's going to need a $3,000 surgery. Yikes. He's probably not going to get. <laughs> so, so, we're giving him pain pills. Good. He's been Yikes. running around like a crazy person anyway. So, I mean, like, I don't know how much he misses that other leg, I guess. That's so crazy. Poor puppy. Dogs are weird, but I'll, I'm going to be toe up when that one has to go. Hmm. So anyway... So it's 9.39. We have 20 minutes. Let's discuss some news topics. I thought that's what we've been doing. Well, I mean, I'm going to pull up some and listen. Have you, how about Tennessee lawmakers suggest burning banned books? I don't like burning of any books. A Republican-led Tennessee legislature passed a bill Wednesday that would require public school librarians to submit 
to the state a list of book titles approved as a GOP lawmaker suggests burning books that are deemed inappropriate. During a contentious debate on the Hill in, in, in the House, State Representative John Ray Clemens, a Democrat, asked State Representative Jerry Saxton, a Republican, what he would do with the books that he and the state consider inappropriate for libraries. The direct quote was, are you going to put them in the street, light them on fire? Where are they going? Clemens asked. I don't have a clue, but I would burn them, Sexton replied. I, yeah. That's, that's, your, like that's your state, girlfriend. Yes. However, can I mention that the state last week, I believe last week might have been the week before, did pass a law that if you are, I believe if you're drunk driving – and you kill um, someone, right, then those children, if they have children, will get child support from the person that killed them, their parent, drunk driving. Well, I mean, maybe they should start worrying about drunk driving more than what happens if you get drunk driving. You're, I mean, you're not wrong, but also, like... Like, it, I mean, it sounds to me like you go to jail for that, right? Right. So, I mean, how are they going to pay money? Mm, good I question. I think that might have been a propaganda bill to get you to look look at something else. Maybe. Probably probably not this banned book one. It's probably, they probably, I, it was probably the Democrats passing a legislation that I'll made them look, look nice. <laughs> i have to look into it. Charlotte, my blankie. Mm. She's like, nah. Nah. So let's check some. What do we want? Uh, business, technology, entertainment, sports, science, or health. Have you been watching the Johnny Depp trial? I haven't watched it, but I've heard some news reports about it and heard some of the testimony. I heard about his report afterwards, but I didn't actually watch the trial. I mean, I'm only on day four. I'm actually a few days behind, right? Because I liked watching the in its entirety, but I can't watch it live and man well, her lawyers are horrible her what is I horrible better, i feel like i was a better lawyer in mock trials in high school than they were it's horrible wow i'm also going to go on record as saying that celebrity gossip is not news no but i'm just saying it's not technically we're not talking about celebrity gossip we're talking about the court the lawyers are horrible Oh, they're bad. I mean, like you. So she, but she doesn't have public defenders. She chose those lawyers. That's even worse. So That's I mean, but I can't be a fault for somebody else's stupidity. Yikes. If she wants to pick, she was she picks the discount lawyer that she picked up at the bus. That's that's her deal. It is kind of crazy that this gets more attention than say like other legal, like more important legal trials you know in my opinion people are more involved in this than they are of like specific like other trials that i think is oh weird. lord have you noticed there's another avian flu epidemic oh god in lancaster county they said a fifth facility <laughs> you're watching and you're you're gonna like get in a, super depressed like reading the news again i mean at the that I'm not sure it can depress me more. These things are all not. I'm, I do this once a week to all the people who don't look at the news. I feel like if you can't look at the news for an hour every day, you need to do something about it because the world is going to shit. Like just because you're ignoring it doesn't mean it's going to change. It's not going to go away. It's not going to get any better by ignoring it. NPR is technically one of my program stations on my radio in my car. So I do think you I'm listen good to it? usually uh -huh, i don't believe you the way you said that was it's all my like you didn't be like i listen to npr every day you're like it's programmed into my car <laughs> i do it on the weekends more so than not on the weekends and i do listen to the daily podcasts do which but, who do you listen to in the mornings like do you ask your smart speaker to play you the news no i look at it on my podcast daily podcast when i get to work so which podcast do you listen to who's the Daily, the NPR oh, the, just, Daily, yeah. Just that one? And, and I, I do like to look at BBC every so often. And lately, I've been, honestly, I've really been going on um, 
Um, I can't think of it right now. Give, so give me a second. What was your most concerning news story this week, Sharon? What what raised your eyebrows? Except this week, because I've been at home. <laughs> Okay, so all the things that happened this week, Sharon hasn't picked out yet, nope. for sure. Oh. Maybe we'll just do a quick, quick, quick rundown of the headlines from this week. Uh, like they did a, a prisoner swap. A dude got swapped in R Russian prisoner camp. Uh, Southern California has is facing a full outdoor watering ban. Biden again? Yeah, it's like they're having a drought. It's like twelve years, like twelve thousand years long. Um, Astra Maid says Gishline Maxwell, former girlfriend of Jeffrey Epstein, found guilty of sex trafficking. That's older. That happened a few weeks ago. Yeah. And again, I feel like that might be a side hustle. Like I feel like that's a that's a Republican look at their emails. Hmm. Well, here in a couple of months, I think July, June, July, I don't remember off to look, I will be very immersed in the World Cup. So that's where my life will be. How do you feel about not having Russia in that? I am very happy about Russia not being in it. Are you kidding? It doesn't matter. They're not that great soccer players anyway. <laughs> but I mean, I just I, I think it's so odd that the world is continuing on. Those athletes were allowed to compete in the olympics this past year even though they just kind of changed the banner or their name and they just were allowed to compete but then the question is do you punish the athletes mm -hmm. for their own country right or these not these kids and that have been working their whole life for something we're gonna let them not do it that one time they had the chance that would suck however would suck so allow like gymnast or somebody to compete even though they were caught or was it a gymnast who was it i think it was a figure gymnast. skater that had the performance that had yeah. drugs yeah but then the one girl that was allowed to smoke weed in a le in a legally like it was legal in that state wasn't allowed to because she smoked pot i don't know i don't know that's ridiculous Those but we all know that the rules of pot are stupid 100%. Yeah. Everybody agrees. 60% of the country is for favorization of legalization right now, but our legislature still won't do it because that won't make them any money. Which is crazy because Colorado would be a perfect example of how they're in a surplus because of the booming industry. And which, whenever you hear a government talk about a surplus, I'm thinking, who, whoever has a surplus? Can't you just give more money to some other government program? Like, Me? anyway... Anyway. A million dollars they're up or something. Well, I'm sure they're up tons because, like, I'm, all, I'm mad about the way they're trying to legalize weed in Virginia because they're only giving out 400 licenses. And there's a provision in it that gives minority people preferential treatment. Um, I think they're it's like, and the the fees that are required to get licenses are prohibitively expensive. So I think they are trying to let Colorado weed buy out the licenses here. Interesting. Because there are already well established weed producing people, as opposed to letting lo small local growers, they are not not feeling it. Interesting. So I'm sad about that, and I don't know what I can do think about that either, because our new governor is not keen on the marijuana situation anyway. Rumor has it Terry might uh, cancel that situation anywho. Mm. And trust and believe, if that happens, I will be protesting on Capitol Lawn. Just trust and believe. You can come bail me out. I will come bail you out. Well, you don't have to, have to come. You can just call a bail bailsman. Just have to do it from there. Well, I'd pick you up. I'd be like, something. Oh, I'd be like, meet you in Richmond. <laughs> there. Brandon, I'm coming and crashing at your house. Uh, hopefully, I mean, I guess maybe you'll, you'd come to the protest, would you? Would you come to the protest? No. You wouldn't come to the, that's, that's sad. Just, just for what they promised us in the first place. Come on, man. I'm fully immersed in, and believe in, you know, that to, 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 
sacrifice possibly getting arrested for? I think protests should be supported for nearly everything because su- pr- protests are our only way to fight back. But I have to believe in what you're protesting. That doesn't make sense. No, you can't believe in the right to protest? No, 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 no. So, okay, but then by then your theory, that means that I can, that I should have gone to the Capitol and protested that? Are you crazy? Maybe if you knew someone who was passionate about it and was like, yeah, come on, let's go. I mean, that's probably how a lot of people ended up at that situation. (laughs) That's how protests work. It's really more about a sheer mass of people than just the couple of people who are really impassioned and kind of driving the crowd. You need maybe 20 or 30 really stalwart, really, I care about this cause to bring a couple of friends, bring a couple of friends, and it blows up. Yeah, no. All you have to do is get people to hang out and chant something. They don't have to really believe. It's respecting the authority that we have as people. And I mean, you don't oppose marijuana legalization. No. So why would you not? Actually, you probably are in favor of it, aren't you? I don't have an opinion one way or the other. Why would you not? I mean, like, that's such a cop out. I don't have an opinion just because you don't want to risk the possible repercussion. Like, being, going to a protest should not have any negative detrimental situation to you at all. I have, a, I have dogs screaming at me. I don't know. For people who don't know, when you normally go to protesters, organizers go to jail. I mean, unless you're in Russia. Obviously, if you're in Russia and you protest, you're all going to jail. Your family's going to jail. They're going to black bag you, put you on the street. Like, ah, that's scary. But for, like, America, (laughs) organizers go to jail. Everybody else is kind of like, you guys go home, disperse. I feel like that's not true, is it? Most most of the time, people who organize it usually step up. Hi, I am responsible for this. I'm I'm the person you take to jail. I'm the one who I want to be on the news. I want to write a book. I'm I'm that guy. I guess it depends on the type of protest you're at, right? Right. Like I if Donald like... Trump had stepped up and said, "I am responsible for the January sixth thing," <laughs> and... all those people that are in jail would be free. Hmm. I have thoughts. Mm hmm. Just like, did I tell you the thing about the fundraising, Donald Trump? Did you hear about this? No. So in 2020, Donald Trump started a website to get campaign uh, contributions like every other candidate did in the world. Right. At the bottom of his, like, you could donate $5, and there's a little box at the bottom that was like all those other things that you agree to the terms and conditions and whatever. And if you check that box, it would give you an automatic referral. It would give, like, in, five, in a month, they were going to charge another $5, right? Like, that's something you're you're used to seeing, whatever. As the campaign wore on, it changed to where the box was automatically clicked. So you had to actively unclick the box to not donate $5 automatically. As it went on, you got that not check mark that you had to remove was buried within seven lines of text. As the campaign went on, that not removable of a check mark would cost you a monthly recurring $25 fee. Yikes. As the campaign wore on, it would get you a $25 fee every two weeks. They had to refund $1.3 billion in credit card misusage because of that. I would be mad too, dog. I was so mad when I heard that. But that's, that is literally... Like, he stole money from the only people that believe in him. Like, people were stupid enough to give him money, and then he scammed them. Yep. And they still believe in him. Ah, I just can't believe. Hold on, I have dogs going crazy. I don't know what your dogs are going crazy for. But we, we really start wrapping it up. We only have five more minutes of this anyway. Wow, that hour went by hella fast. Because we just talked about random shit. We do that a lot. That's, this is... This is... This is an intro into, or this is a brief look into what our conversations are via phone on a daily basis. I don't know why we don't do this every Wednesday, because then we could just, like, it's literally what I said is that, like, you know, there's lots of people in the world that I can't keep in touch with, and I would love to have everybody just hang out Wednesday night. Like, every Wednesday, this is where I'll be. 
How many times have we had phone conversations and literally like we were like we should have talked about this on Wednesday and we're like all I don't know, the fucking time right now all of them right all of them puppies it's a th- it's a thing but I would like to just I'll just go ahead and end it so I'm gonna say thank you and goodbye make sure everybody likes subscribes and follows we'll be here next week don't forget to write and change the vote um when you go to vote if you're displeased with your options you want to write and change the vote so we can all actually get some change if I decide to run for office then I guess we'll start writing that in. Ugh. We'll think about it. Okay. (laughs) Bye.